is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We are going to be talking about this big baseball slate. Again, not so big because they're splitting them up a lot more this year, the slates. So we're going to have a lot more of that to do to, to deal with. I will have my core projections up even for the really early slates and everything like that on Saber Sim every day. Um, say we are also just uh, making a video with Saber Sim to go through the tools and sort of go through our, you know, you know how we can use things through us and stuff like that. And we're going to be doing that tomorrow. So I wanted to get you guys ready for that. We, uh, we appreciate everybody who has signed up and we're excited to, uh, to keep this going. It's a little tricky to, to, at the beginning with the baseball, but I'm starting to get the, the hang of it. But any other things you guys would like to see or, or would want us to want to see from us, just let us know and, and I'll, we'll do the best we can on the True DFS support uh, channel. And uh, with that said, Sheets, we got a big slate. It's baseball, so it's wild. And we, we got sort of basketball, NBA last night. We had the, 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 the late, uh, uh, the Trout was right before Locke. And then we had the, uh, who was it for, for, for Miami who was out? And then Cooper was playing. And then Patino. And, and then Patino got, 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 hurt, got hurt during the game. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, that's just, you're, you're not going to be able to do anything with this. Um, it's just the way it is. But so we're going to have to deal with the variance. But at the same time, I do think there's some big upside for results. I like the tonight's slate. I mean, I don't have all the ownership exactly yet, but I do think that it could be fairly spread out in terms of stacks. So I would just say like when that happens, even if there's stacks I like better, I'm, I'm going to be completely willing to, to change that and, and go towards some of these, you know, maybe lower owned stacks that. Oh, that I don't absolutely. And I'm telling you, I'm already, I, I already have a feel for it is yeah. that every, every one of these kind of like lineups, it looks like ridiculous. They yeah. just, all you need is a couple of stupid things to happen. And next thing you know, you got a top 20 lineup with a shot. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. and baseball, baseball is just like that. You know, I just remember last year, all those times, that Colorado chalk failed, like literally like every single time it seems, you know, it's, it's, it's just not easy for chalk to get there in baseball. It's just not that easy with, especially, especially with the hitting. I mean, look, pitching will eventually, you know, become pretty predictable, I think. And, you know, chalk spend up pitchers, you know, I think have a higher, obviously have a higher likelihood of getting there than chalk hitters, but, and, and we'll be able to, do that kind of like dual look at like slates, like, okay, the pitchers, we can be pretty confident, but, but hitting's kind of, kind of, kind of wacky. Um, but at the beginning of the season, like you're saying, like even the pitching is a little, uh, is a little, uh, is a little fishy. Yeah. It's just going to be fishy for a little bit, I think. And, you know, we sort of did get a couple things, right. Even though there were some things wrong, obviously, but the Manoa, you know, having the upside that was really the only guy who could put up the really monster score and did Paul, and it wasn't ready for the Paul Blackburn absolute gem that he threw against Tampa Bay. But um, in general, that's all we can do is chase the upside a little or, or go after the upside a little bit. And, uh, and yeah, try and figure it out from there because it's, it, it is going to be for the next month, at least um, one of these things where you're not going to see a lot of starters go more than four or five innings. And uh, we'll try and find the best ones we can. It's going to be tricky because so far the, if you literally played like the, the, just the cheapest guys in the slate, you probably would have made money so far just <laughs> randomly. Yep. Anyway, um, all right, well, let's get into it. Let's go game by game. Sheets, why don't we pull your screen up and we'll, uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll, go, uh, we'll go through it because I think it's the best way to do the, the morning part of this. Oh, yeah, sure. And, and uh, all I got to do is find my Zoom thing. Okay, um, so I have an interesting, by the way, I could talk about this online with you. So I had this idea um, for stakings, for stake kings and staking. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually ran it through with your, with your with your man over there. I think it's a great idea. Remember we talk about sometimes how cool it would be to be able to put up either a poker stake or a, or even a DFS stake like deep into the slate, you know, like where where you have points and it's either a really really good lineup that which which would require you know big buy big markup or maybe maybe a lineup which is kind of like fish you know fishy and bad. So maybe you sell that cheaper like a point two or something like that if something's like totally dead. I actually brought it up with him today. I said, you ever, you ever consider like trying that with DFS? It reminded me because the other day when you had mentioned that you put up a, you put up a, a stake where I, would, I think it was just after it started or something like that. I'm like, oh, it's fine. No, it was before, no, 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 no. I never did it after it started. I, it's not a lot. Not before it started, but what, maybe it got closed, maybe the time was different or something like there was yeah, some, yeah, yeah. there was something where it spurred the discussion yeah. of, well, what happens if they don't see it until it started or something like that? Okay. Well, at least they know, you know, that, 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 we're deep in it. And I was thinking, well, why not do that on purpose? Why not say, okay, this is a lineup, which is freaking killing it with like only like three games to go. Why don't I put that up there? I'll sell 30% of it at say, you know, minus 300 or something like that, or 500 if it's like really, really big. 
and see how see how people can price this stuff. I don't know. I think it's interesting. It is. Um, I think it's we sort of talked about before. I think it's a, I think it's a really interesting idea. Yeah. So let's let's see what that what happens with that. All right. So first game, what do we got? Milwaukee, Baltimore. Yep. What okay. do you think? go ahead? You can start us off here. Um, I really don't have much. I, I didn't really get to either of the pitchers. Now, when you look at the pitching, my pitching lineup again today, it's pretty similar. It's a couple of guys that might be a little bit better, but it's again very uh very middling as far as like points per dollar and raw points and things like that. It's 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 tough. Um, I right now I'm not getting. I don't think much of Milwaukee. I'm getting a little bit of Milwaukee. That's about the best I'll describe it. And Baltimore, I will get some Baltimore in kind of like NME type stacks. But as far as just like kind of hand built stuff, I don't really get, in, I don't think either of these teams are much of a priority. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go right back to Milwaukee. I, I, I really do have a lot of questions about their lineup. So it feels weird, but you get, you're going to get a lower owned lineup in sort of the nut situation in general, which is going to be in Baltimore against this pitching staff. Um, maybe they've improved. We'll see. It's going to take a little while to figure it out, but I, I think we should always be attacking this. It is interesting though. Cause like other than like Rowdy Tellez is like a value play. Um, it's, it's hard to like, lo- like Christian Yelich for a guy, his price range is just, we've just got come to like, maybe we have to come to understand that he's just not nearly the same guy he was a few years ago. Um, I do like Adamas and then, you know, what he's, what he's got for the future. It's, it's tough for me though. Cause like, uh, Renfro, I think there's upside obviously, but like, it's not like these are like the most exciting guys to play on a, on a pretty full slate, but I, I do think that there's a situation against Baltimore something I want to attack. And then I will, uh, throw in a Mancini at 2,900 as a good play for, uh, against Lauer. I do think Lauer is going to be in the conversation with a bunch of other guys, but just throwing it out there, uh, do with it what you will. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I will have more information on that at six Eastern when we go live. And I think it's probably going to be more six Eastern when there's a seven o'clock Eastern in baseball, just because yeah. there's not quite as much of a reason to get in there early and really, you know, uh, it, we, we can stay through. It's not that hard to, to finish the last things for me, uh, at least until I'm entering 150 lineups or something. So right. that's what I think we'll probably be doing. Um, Anyway, yeah, so I, 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 I do actually have Milwaukee as, as one of my top stacks right now, but I just feel bad when I look at the actual players I'm playing, but that's where we're at. So anyway, we can move on. Um, Want to talk about your Yankees and uh, Blue Jays here? Yeah, so um, yesterday, as we mentioned, uh, Manoa had a really, really nice game. Uh, he had the upside. Uh I didn't realize that uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kikuchi is on Toronto now. I don't even, it may have been there last year. <laughs> That's how we were. No, no, he's in Seattle. Yeah. He's still in Seattle. Um, uh, I, I'm not playing him, I don't think. And I don't think I'm playing Cortez. Cortez is showing up as kind of like an okay value in Twitter. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. If anything, I would probably take shots at both of the hitting here. And neither of these are kind of the top play for me. But uh, I definitely would get 10% Yankees, 10% Toronto, something like that. Um, uh, and that's pretty much where I am in this game. Yeah, I agree. I, I, so the way I'm, I'm looking at it with the Yankees in Toronto this year, just something I always try to do, is I'll often, um, just because of the, the they have so many bats that I'm interested in. So talking about individual, like, like I really like George Springer here. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that we have a little, first of all, I like that in New York, it's not like, Look, it's like, you know, it's 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 mid 60s. It's not bad weather. So no, we're, not, no. we're not like going to try and deal with the freezing cold. You have a bunch of guys who can really hit lefties on both sides. Um, so I, I, I would st- I would start with Springer. But, I you know, I'm going to no problem with Bichette, Tiasker, Vlad I w- and, and Matt Chapman, especially. I think Chapman and Springer are my favorite, too. But I like the idea of a Toronto secondary stack at the moment more than a full stack because I don't always want to mess with good bullpens just like it's just a general look it, it can happen I mean Tampa Bay has a great bullpen but when you lose your pitcher after two batters sometimes it's a little hard it's a little little trickier to to have the you know the best results from your bullpen but on the Yankees side like the guys these guys aren't going to be owned but Stanton Judge and, and Donaldson I mean that's a really really powerful versus lefties three-man combination and I know Kikuchi's not bad. I, I, he's, I, don't, I don't think he's bad. I actually think he's a good pitcher. He's been underrated. He's been really, really good in his career against the uh, – it's not, it's not against the spread, against the run total. Mm-hmm. And 
he's just always been good at that and, and minimizing damage and whatnot. But I really like the idea of those three guys. And if you wanted to include a fourth or a fifth, you know, you could always, you could always play a, a Joey Gallo in a lefty lefty situation uh, at 4,200. You could always play Rizzo. It's pretty easy to get to a stack on, on the Yankee side for me. Um, but I don't know how much it's going to be a priority. I do think their secondary stacks on for both these teams are priorities for me. So I will be getting the two mans in the three mans in, and then some one-offs from these teams. Um, Miami and, and uh, the angels, any, any initial thoughts here? Because I'm sort of, this is the one game I'm sort of like struggling with a little bit. Yeah. First of all, from pitching perspective, I do have um, Sandoval as maybe, you know, a 10% or whatever. I, my, my initial, my initial builds, I have, I have uh, like three pitchers that are kind of dominating the ownership and we haven't gotten to any of them yet. Yeah. Um, Lauer would be like my fourth right now. And, and Sandoval would be like a 10 percenter. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get to Lazar. I mean, maybe like if I, I ran, what I did was I ran like a 150 just to see what I would do right now. If I did right. anything and I did 150, I have Lazardo at like literally like 1%. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm really not getting that either. Um, but what, what I am getting is the, um, is the angels. Um, I'm getting right now about 25% of my lineups would be, would be angel stacks. Um, and, uh, obviously we have to see what, what's going to happen with trout, whether he's going to play or not, whatever. But, um, as you mentioned, I mean, Otani and Rendon, Rendon at 4,100 seems, uh, pretty fair to yep. say the least. I agree. Um, and, and, and trout. And so, so the, so the angels, uh, um, rate for me is right now the third, my third best stack. So that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, uh, I agree that they're an interesting stack. I, I don't know how, where they're going to end up for me, but I do have them as one of it's, it's weird though. Cause I, I like the trout, Otani, Rendon. And then I feel like you just get into a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, like you like Fletcher's and crap like that. I yeah, mean, like, yeah. Jackie Mayfield and yeah. And Joe Adele. I mean, he's 3,800 and we're not getting them at 2k. Um, well, well I'll, tell you what's, I'll, I'll tell you what's interesting. You know, when I break it down, by the way, between what types of stack I'm getting, yeah. Like I have, I would have them in literally zero five man stacks and you know how I like to play the five man stacks. Mm-hmm. I'd have zero five man stacks angels and only a handful of four. I would have them mostly in the three mans, you know? So it's yeah. the three guys that we just mentioned, you know, Tani Rendon and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, Trout. Yeah. So it's, so you hit the nail right on the head. I mean, like once you get past those three is a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of fishiness. Yep. Especially because Walsh and you know, arguably could argue for Marsh, who's at home run last night. Two of their better other hitters are left-handed, and the lefty-lefty spot is not desirable. But, um, but yeah, I, I, that's that's how I've got it exactly. Shoots. Um, all right. Uh, well, the frustration of Atlanta. Um, I think this is going to be a higher priority for me than these than some of the other ones. I am a little worried that people are overrating Atlanta's lineup based on reputation, like. There's, I mean, I understand Matt Olson's there, but like just as an overall hitter, if, there, if you want a guy in a stack over the last number of years, you'd much rather, even if Olson put up as many fantasy points or whatever, you, you much rather have the guy who, who is going to walk a hundred plus times. It makes the five man stack feel better to keep the lineup moving. Um, and then you take Acuna out of the lineup, who's your top play usually. So, and yet they're still getting owned and the, the, the Vegas still loves them. They, they haven't been, or they certainly were not weren't great for us yesterday. I am tempted to go back here because um, I think Corbin <clears throat> Corbin is just easy. We know his range of output. He can get wild. He'll give up a ton of hard contact and he's going to give up a lot of home runs this season. And I don't trust the bullpen behind him. So I understand it didn't work yesterday. I'm happy to go. I guess that's sort of the theme of my early part of the slate is that I'm, I'm very happy to go back to Atlanta and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about going back to the Brewers as well. Um, after just having terrible nights, which is what you're going to have to do in baseball. You have to have a very short memory for some of this stuff. If teams haven't hit in a week, doesn't mean they'll never hit again. Um, it's just, a, it's just a, it's a high variance game, but uh, specifically on Atlanta, Albies is going to look like, even if you don't play Atlanta, like he's, I mean, if you're playing cash games or you want a safe, safer piece, whatever safe means in baseball, Albies would be a good bet for that with the power speed upside, a good price at second base. Um, Austin Riley, Adam Duvall, Marcelo, Marcelo Zuna, all these guys stand out. So that means they're going to be owned. Um, and I am, uh, I am going to just pretty much always beat the Juan Soto drum like, that I, that I think you should be trying to play him as much as you can. 
And, uh, you know, Washington put up some runs last night and we have basically what looks like it's going to be a, a bullpen game for Atlanta. And, uh, I don't love stacking against bullpen games, but I certainly don't mind Nelson Cruz at fourth out, 4K and unowned. It's not, not my, you know, we'll see how he is. Everybody always thinks he's old at the beginning of the year. Then he, by the time he has 40 home runs, it's like, oh, why don't we play him at the beginning of the year? Now we're playing him at 30%. Um, so Soto and, and Cruz are the ones who stand out to me. I don't think I want to go for a full stack from Washington. Sheets. All right, you want to move on? You, oh, you didn't have anything at all in this one? Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. I had maybe, I thought I went first. Yeah, you're right. I, I have only I have uh, only about 10 percent Atlanta from this game yeah. and uh, really no exposure anywhere else. I have nothing for Washington and neither pitcher. Sorry. Gotcha. No, 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 no problem. Um, all right. This next game is going to be one that I won't have anything to do with the Dodger game because I think that the weather is a real concern. And also, like, it, the only thing I would be looking at probably is pitching. I mean, it's 50 degrees in Minnesota. It's raining, obviously. And the wind's blowing in uh, pretty hard from center field. So at 12 miles an hour, as of right now, it is 90% humidity there. So that's something. But, um, I, I mean, look, I, if it, like, by the time this all rolls around and we'll see how the weather, if it changes this afternoon or anything like that. But unless it does, I'm not really going to take any bats here um, because I'm worried about the weather. And Heaney, well, I like I'm, I'm, I like him. Um, the, you know, historically, the Dodgers have given their guys a little bit more, well, early in the season with guys who they think are actual, like, legit starters, not their bullpen games where they're pitching everybody two innings. But I don't know. I can't figure out what to do with it. So I, boast, I mostly feel like I'm probably going to stay away here unless the weather clears up. Well, I'm glad that you brought this up. Um, so... First of all, I didn't know what to do with Haney. I never quite know what to do with Haney. Um, but when we used to play Haney, he was on the Angels where, yep. you know, he was actually, I don't know, I, I consider him a starting pitcher or whatever. If you tell me that the Dodgers might not use him completely. Um, no, I, I don't. I'm not saying that. I just actually said the opposite. I was saying oh. that what we've seen in the past from guys who are their main starters, they do let them go. They don't let the other guys go. Oh, okay. Well, it's, well, I mean, it's, it's weird, though, because it's, everybody will come back at me and say, well, what about Urias and all those beginning years? When guys are 21, 22, 23 pitching games, it's a lot more sense than a guy who's a, a veteran who you actually went out of your way to try and sign this offseason. So my thinking is that maybe he has a little more leash than most guys, but I don't know if that's more than 80 pitches. I mean, I don't know. Andrew Haney always seemed to be that guy that had upside. Um, yeah. The guy that you would fade his chalk, but like play it at low ownership. Um, I think he's going to be the most popular, one of the most popular pitchers. Yeah. So if that's the case, this is one of those where you probably want to fade him as chalk. You know, that's, 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 that's what I would do. Now you brought up the, uh, the weather. Um, uh, You know, I want to keep an eye on that because, because currently I actually have the, uh, the Dodgers, my second highest owned stack. Um, And that was obviously probably before any, weather adjustments is going to be played in, you know, so I have to keep an eye on that. And the good thing is the projections do change uh, due to, due to weather across yep. the board. So that, that could come back, but I don't know. I don't know when the last time Chris Archer pitched, um, but uh, I don't know, man. I, I think this could be, uh, unless the Dodgers like lost all their players in the last like two days, I, I, I think, Unless the weather is really that bad, I, I would take a shot at the Dodgers. It's that bad because the Dodgers have a six-run total in this game, and they have a 4.7-run total in this game. That's That shows you how much that they think of the weather, in my opinion, because okay. 50 degrees, 12 miles an hour blowing in from center, okay. even if you get runs. And, and look, if you look at the lineup for the Dodgers, I would be – I mean, you're going to be hearing me talk about the Dodgers stack every day. <laughs> like, it's right. – it, it's, it's, and one great thing about it is if this game does go – I don't think anybody's playing these guys. I really don't. I just think the Dodgers are going to be very, very unowned. And yeah, I'm going to have to try it. Yeah. I, I'm, I would even with the, even with the weather issues, but like, I, I don't know. It just, I, I sort of have the X that game out temporarily because it, it does really worry me. And obviously, and let, if you do it, I guess if it comes down to it and you think the game is like 60, 40 to play and you want to take a really big chance, which I think is probably not the best thing to do on a bigger slate. Yeah, I think you just fully stack it though. Um, you yeah. know, you don't you don't mess around at all, and you might even want to include somebody from the other side, like Buxton, um, just just to just to just to say like if the stadium if it's playing well and everything like that, and and these guys right. can still hit the ball out, like yeah, let's let's play it. But I don't know, it just it feels like an ugly game 
Just well, that's, that's interesting. You know, we talked about this in our baseball preview video. Like correlation is different in baseball as opposed to basketball. Like basketball, you think that one team is scoring, they're going to push the other team to score and keep it a close game and things like that. Mm -hmm. But baseball correlation is funny. You know, it's like if, if the weather is if the weather affects one team, it affects the other team, right? So that's right. the way correlation works. Or if for whatever reason they, the the park is just playing better, you know, or if the umpires are, you know, you'd like to think the umpires are equal for both sides, right? So mm -hmm. so. so uh, so, so that's so correlation is not so much like one team. I asked you this once before. If one team is up eight nothing, does that affect the run total of the other team? Is it more likely that the other team lets them have a couple, or is it more likely that they just tank it and like don't score anything? I think we we I think we determined the conclusion it didn't really matter. Um, but I, I always thought about that. Like if one team's up eight nothing. What 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 does that affect like the run output for for the for the team that's behind? I, mean, I, I, I don't think you could statistically come up with a logical thing. Cause like, it's going to, it's totally depending on who the pitcher is. Like okay. what's going to happen is if, if you're up eight, nothing and you have Scherzer on the mound, um, he's not going to, he's going to give up home runs in that situation plenty of times. Okay. Um, yeah, or, or a good pitcher who, you know, or even just an average pitcher who whatever, but they're also going to be able to, to not walk anybody. It's going to be hard for the other team to, to, to get the runners on, but at the same time, the power upside probably goes up because you just throw strikes. You don't want to walk anybody. That's the way I look at it. Um, AC, KC St. Louis? Yeah, let's talk. Why don't you start us off here? Yeah, so my initial builds uh, are, are paying down to pitching. And and if you saw, like, my projections, I mean, like, everybody's ridiculous. They're all, like, between, like, except for Darvish, they're all between, like, 10 and 13 points pretty much. Right. Um, and as such, uh, Dakota Hudson is just kind of showing up. You know, he doesn't have – you know, incredible upside, but at 6,300, um, this is just the builds that I'm trying to get right now. So he's actually my third highest owned pitcher at current, at current, uh, if it locked now, um, that's just the way it would be. Um, and I didn't, uh, get too much, if any of the hitting, uh, either St. Louis or Kansas city. Uh, what do you, what do you think of this game? Yeah, I actually kind of like this the the, the hitting for St. Louis here, but again, and I'll, I'll go through my priorities at the end of the show as we as we do because I don't want to say like I don't want to be the show that likes everybody who has a good run total, but I just want to talk it through because yep. this game you do have. I mean, they've they've got wind blowing out twenty miles an hour to left field. You have uh, okay. a, a poor on the poor side of of of, of average lefties mm -hmm. going against guys who, while some of it might be historical numbers in in Arenado and, and Goldschmidt. These guys can still hit. Uh, you got Carlson and O'Neill sandwiched in between. The, you know they're, they're they're on the other sides of those guys. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do Albert Pujols, but basically everybody else in this lineup is in play for me, which means the whole stack is in play. I also like to pick on teams that are I believe will have a shaky bullpen. Again, we're still speculating on that, but teams that are basically bad are going to more often have a bad bullpen. It's just the way that the way the baseball works. Um, so I like Hudson, and I like I like the the St. Louis stack. And I'm going to use that as a, as a real quick point that I like to make it, This is not a, a, a thing you have to do, but in the long run, you'll be happier taking pitchers. It's not going to matter as much early in the season, but you'll be happier taking pitchers with offenses that you like, because if the offenses are doing well, it does actually correlate really well to the pitchers. Like I said, they're going to end up giving up a home run here and there, but it, it takes away that, you know, they're not going to be, they're not going to be walking and trying to pitch, you know, pitch around the corners. They're going to be challenging hitters and pitching with a lead allows you to be very free. So if you get ahead of anybody, you could just use basically use anything in your bag of tricks or whatever. And it always does seem to benefit these, these, especially the high strikeout studs. And while Hudson is not that, we're looking for guys with, with some upside. So if, it, if it's a five nothing game in the third or fourth inning and, and a couple guys get on, they don't need to pull him. You know what I mean? Whereas, not, to men, not to mention when you're dealing with a 12 point projection, those four points for the win are huge. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So to get, if you can get through five, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's that would be ideal. Um, but I, I do like the uh, the St. Louis stack, and I and I would say specifically, uh, Arenado, Goldschmidt. I go. I would go Arenado, Goldschmidt, Carlson, O'Neill, or or Goldschmidt first, either one. But I like all four of the top four, um, and especially you know I always I've always been a sucker, and he's partly because he's made me a lot of money in Goldie, and I've made a lot of money off Arenado on the road because that's the only time you can usually get him on, on owned. And we have a very low ownership projection on St. Louis. So I do like them. Not sure where they're going to end up for me, but they are one of my stacks as of right now. So apparently my, my projections, if they were a person, like they really have an opinion on this upcoming game. Um, oh, okay. Let's hear it. They really have an opinion. Uh, number one, 
I will cut I'm very lead here. Number one, I'm getting on 150 lineup builds, about 80% Texas stats. Okay. That, that that's for openers. Not to mention that I have to work so hard to actually that's I have to work so hard to just to get Corey Seeger out of any lineups. I mean, mm-hmm. like it, it wants to just jam him in. Um not not to mention that of those stacks, I mean 36% of all the lineups are five-man stacks of Texas. Okay. And now if that's not cruel enough, I'm getting Martin Perez as my highest owned pitcher. Okay. <laughs> um, so they must have it in for Colorado in some form that they just think Texas is gonna blow them out and Perez is just gonna just suck along for the win and get his 12 fantasy points or 13 fantasy points and go home uh, at whatever his price is, 6,300, 5,800. Okay, so that's just where I'm getting right now for better or for worse. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I don't know what to do with the situation. I think <laughs> that it's very strange to have back-to-back days where the highest run totals in the slate are in Texas. Yeah. I think this is one of, I mean, Look, it doesn't. This is not, you know, Colorado guys. These guys can all hit anyway. It's just like you take Colorado out of Colorado it's, and put them in Texas. It, it's a, it's a huge, huge park downgrade for these guys. And I don't see that being reflected in the run totals, partially because of the pitchers we're having out there. Um, I get it with Texas. I do think that lineup is obviously better than it was, but I would try to lean on the the upper tier of the lineup. I think you can make arguments, I guess, for some of the lower guys in the stacks, but. You know, Brad Miller obviously is going to be really popular because of the price. Um, I think Simeon maybe gets overlooked a little bit because there's other good second basemen that is at his yeah. in his price tier. Um, but I agree with you about Seeger. They're um, all going to be really popular. Yeah, I think so. I don't know about Simeon. Not Simeon. He's the only one I have. Yeah, then and he's the the. I mean, our, based on last year, you'd say he's by far the best hitter on this team. Although it's actually Corey Seeger. Um, and then you got a really good catcher spot with Garver. So I actually think Garver and Seager are my favorites here. I don't mind the Brad Miller play, and I'm going to play some Brad Miller all season long. It's just when you get to 30% owned for a baseball player, it's like, you know, and that's poss- very possible. It's sort of like doing that with a golfer. It just doesn't make that much sense um, from an overall perspective. But again, ownership is, is a big thing. It doesn't have to be everything, but it is, it is a really big thing that I'm going to have to try and uh, probably be underweight on this Texas full stack or use them as a mini stack. If I use, you them. could probably play us like a, a semi low. This guy's going to be low. Owned Cause he's like pretty expensive. Given he might bat ninth. That'd be Willie Calhoun. Um, yeah. 3,500 batting ninth is tough for him. Um, so maybe he'll be low. Owned. you can get him. Yeah. Or Cole Calhoun, 3,300 batting seventh. Yeah. That would be another one I would look at, but yeah, I, I agree. You like any, any Martin Perez or. Uh, I'm okay with it. Like I, I just, it's, it's how I feel about all the pitchers. There's nothing I specifically like about Martin Perez. Um, I think he's a better pitcher at limiting damage than he gets credit for, but um, I'm not a guy who I ever generally pay up for or generally play on, on my lineups. But I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. It's just, it's not, there's nothing exciting about it, but that's, that might be good enough to win. You don't necessarily need the exciting guys because they never get there. <laughs> um, Houston, Arizona. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Um, when I first look at it, I, 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 not, I only get to a little bit of Houston and, and, mm-hmm. and no Arizona, but actually that's not true. Maybe like 10% Houston, which is a decent amount. Um, I kind of feel like I'm supposed to play more though. Um, remember, I mean, Bumgarner is, you know, he's, Hey, he's, 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 uh, he's hanging in there. <laughs> I think he had a decent first start if I'm not mistaken. I didn't, I didn't look at it, but I pitched, um, three, pitched three innings. Oh, that's all he did? Oh, okay. I, 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 you know, I thought he was doing better. Hold on, let me just see. He, was, he, he had four walks. And oh, he did have four walks. Through. Okay. But he's not going to pitch much. I mean, it's not. All right. So, I mean, Houston's, I mean, they, they, it scares me to not have more of them in this spot, if you want to know the truth. Um, but right now, that's where I am. I have about 10% Houston. Uh, nothing from Arizona and neither from Houston. Um, yeah, I like Houston, uh, as well. I, I, I think this is a, a, probably better spot than, than their run total is implying. I don't buy the, the Diamondbacks bullpen. And I think you're getting Bumgarner and basically what's going to be a bullpen game. If he's going to pitch three or four innings, which is, seems pretty possible. Um, so I like Houston as a stack individually. I really like Bregman 
And you get guys like Altuve, which is why guys like Simeon won't be quite his own. Um, but Bregman and uh, Altuve, and I'll just remind everybody, even though he was better last year, the one guy who I tend to leave off of Houston stacks is, um, you know, because again, he's got enough, he's, uh, he's got a little power, but it's not like he's, I don't know. I feel like he gets owned a little bit too much or not owned a little too much, but played a little too much as a clever play. I don't think I would play Guriel. Um, and I would probably fade a lot of the bottom of the lineup. I might include like a McCormick in a five man stack or a Maldonado if I needed a cheap catcher, but uh, Altuve Pena is supposed to bet second and he's 2,200 Bregman. Uh, and then you could use the lefty lefty Alvarez. I think all of those guys are really good. So I like Houston one through four quite a bit. Um, and I don't mind if you ever want to play Kyle Tucker. He's not as good against lefties, obviously. Um, but I, I think that uh, just a guy who, because he's batting down in the order, is always lower owned. And uh, I only think the guy, the guys who will be owned are going to be the Bregman, Altuve, Pena. I don't see anybody else getting much ownership here. And I am not going to play Garcia, and I am not going to play bats from Arizona. Uh, all right, San Diego and San Fran to close out the night again. Um, you close it out with probably maybe the two chalk pitchers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah. So as I kind of alluded to throughout throughout the show, I mean, it seems as though the only guy with legit upside here in this whole slate I guess, is is Darvish, and it's it's not easy, you know, play going to San Francisco. But you know, we had the same conversation. This is totally different, but like. Manoa gets the Yankees. And when you got, we have a pitcher with upside, I mean, you, and the rest of the slate is just bereft of it. I mean, like, you don't, you don't, I don't know. I think you should probably try to play him. Uh, that's the best I can describe this. Um, but again, he's going to be high. If he's going to be as high owned as I'm seeing right now, now, now I'm back to wanting to play San Francisco again. You, you know, this is, this is the way MLB to GPPs work. Um, I probably play some San Francisco, probably play some Darvish. That's the way that's going to be. And San Diego, you get um, to San Francisco, you have Alex Cobb, and uh, he's going to be high owned as well. And he's just another guy as far as I'm concerned. So for me, if he's going to be really chalky, I, I wouldn't mind with the Martin Perez's or the Dakota Hudson's in the world rather than uh, rather than Alex Cobb. But he's certainly raised to be a good play. Um, but, you know, uh, again, you just got to play the ownership game, I think. A lot of good talk about Alex Cobb and coming out of the offseason. Um, that his he apparently he's got his fastball up almost five miles an hour um he's his movement looks good uh, i've heard a lot about him he's a guy who i always followed because i thought he was really going to be great and he actually really was for a couple of years like he looked really really great before he had the arm troubles um this is the lowest total game by a long shot on the slate i don't think you should be playing either sides of the, the stacks in general um the one thing I would say is like, well, no, I don't even want to say that. I mean, it's 50 degrees, San Francisco. So welcome to San Francisco. It's going to be like yeah. that all summer. Um, uh, I, there's no way I'm playing San Francisco. That's one thing I can promise. Um, but I don't, I, I don't like on slates like this, we have all these good stacks at low ownership. Why would I try to pick on the best pitcher on the slate yeah, with, the, I like, guess. with the best bullpen behind him? Well, arguably the best bullpen on the slate. So I, I don't know. I, I, I can't get to it personally. Um, I don't think if you wanted to play a one-off of Jock or something like that, that I'd have a problem or Brandon Belt on FanDuel where he's cheap. Um, but I, I, I do think, I do think I'm probably going to have interest in both these guys. I'm going to take some shots on, on Cobb, but I don't love like an own, uh, a reasonably high owned Cobb. <laughs> um, so I'm sort of struggling a little bit with this game. I, I think that I'll probably just play the pitchers and stay away from everything else. I, if I was going to take a shot on one of the offenses though, it would definitely be on the Padre side, like Gresham, uh, Grisham, uh, Machado, Luke Voigt, those would be the guys I would play, but I, I don't think I need to do that because I've got some other stacks I like better. So mostly it's going to be Darvish with some Cobb. And then, uh, yeah, I don't think any batters for me. Yeah. All right. So let's sum it up real quick. Um, well, for me, I, I, will, I guess I'll say my part of it. Like, I, I do think Darvish, uh, again, I'm going to have some Cobb, but I'm deciding Darvish as Hudson, Cobb, Lauer, not really excited about any of it. Sandoval um, as my pitchers, but I, I feel the best about Darvish, but I don't love the spending up on pitchers. So I'll have to figure out how to, how I'm going to swing that one. Um, on, I, I like some, some, I, I, my, my favorite stacks are Atlanta, Houston, and I'm sort of debating with the other ones. I will have some Texas mini stacks to try to at least not have the full chalk there. And I will have Yankees mini stacks 
uh, Blue Jays mini sacks, two or three man. That's what I mean mostly when I say that. Um, Angels, two to three man. And I'll be mixing those guys in. And I might even do like a 4 2 2 on some things tonight um, or a 4 3 1 or even a 3 3. Wait, 4 4 2. I meant 4 4 4 4 4 1 is what I meant, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I just think there's there's ways to get different. And, and I think stacking is right, but I don't think it's like, I don't know. You could see you, you, it depends on what you want to do. In general, yes, it should be five, five, two, one, or whatever. But today I might do a little bit of the four, the four stuff. Um, just throwing that out there. Cause I don't love one lineup so much better than the others. And I actually think I should probably get to more St. Louis as well. So I, I don't know. I'm still I'm still trying to decide. I'm gonna do some digging and see if there's anything else I can figure out. If there was one stack to go for, um, if, if the game plays, I do think the Dodgers are going to be a very, like whenever they're going to be low owned, I think we just got to take shots with them. Um, basically even in tough matchups, and this is not a, a, touch, a tough matchup for them. So. And for me, early look is Darvish at the top. Uh, and then any of those, any of those middlers works for me. Um, I, you know, I, I right now probably pay down for Perez and hope that Texas, as we talked about, hope that Texas puts up a five spot on him and then they Perez buys himself five innings. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and, uh, Texas is the number, my number one stat, but you know, as, as ownership kind of comes in, uh, you know, you have to figure out what else you want to do. So other teams I would throw in, I'd throw in Milwaukee, uh, throw in the Yankees, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe some funny Miami stuff, maybe Baltimore. I mean, again, it depends, you know, but, but with the, with the chalkier pitchers, maybe Baltimore would be kind of a, kind of a funny one to throw in against Lauer. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Well guys, I'll be live with you at six Eastern sheets. Are you going to be able to make it? Um, yeah, I think so. Cool. Anytime you're not, just let me know and I'll, I'll see if I can get Rody on there too, just to have some fun. Um, all right, great, man. Well, so I'll see you at six and, see, uh, see, see, but what, what, what Bobby just said right there without saying it is that, is that it's with me. It's no fun. See if you no, have Rody on, then it would be for fun. You know, just have some fun. He's going to have no. Rody on because when no, I'm there, it's, no, not, no, 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 it's, it's fine. It's all good. Don't worry. I'll that be is there. not I'll at all there. what I meant. I just, I I'll, just, I'll bring my clown nose. I'll make it, I'll make it more fun. It's all good. That came in more trying to get set up a regular schedule so I can tell uh, Rody. So that was that. Was and he could come on too. We can have all three of us. Whatever. Yeah, it's just a little. It's harder for him to make the days. So I like okay. to try and use them when you're not there. Um, all right, man. All right, guys. Take, take it easy. Good luck, everybody.